from PRX. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and friends beyond the binary, it's time for the podcaster that's uh, bringing you some relaxation. It's almost time to slow it down, to take your mind off of stuff and get goofy, get silly. It, come on, come on, let's get silly and sidetra- sidetracked and silly. It's time for Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. All right, everybody, I want to tell you about one of my favorite podcasters, one of my favorite sleep podcasts in a show I really want you to check out. It's called Sleep Meditation for Women. I've mentioned it on the podcast before. It's made by my friend Katie Kay. I like saying Katie Kay, too. It's uh, Katie Kermitsos, and I think I said that right on the first try. I didn't even have to edit it. But Sleep Meditation for Women includes guided meditations to help relax your body and calm your mind. Uh, You can fall asleep and stay sleep. You can listen to Sleep Meditation for Women for free on your favorite podcast player. There's hundreds of guided meditations to choose from. And here's the thing. Katie really cares. Uh, I've met Katie and her husband Chris in person multiple times and uh, the love they bring to the world uh, shines through on this podcast as well. So sleep deeply tonight by subscribing to Sleep Meditation for Women. Simply search for Sleep Meditation for Women in your favorite podcast player or go to Women's meditationnetwork.com slash sleep podcast. That's women's meditation network.com slash sleep podcast. Thanks everybody. Sleep With Me is brought to you by Progressive. Have you tried the Name Your Price tool yet? It works just the way it sounds. You tell Progressive how much you want to pay for car insurance, and they'll show you coverage options that fit your budget. It's easy to start a quote, and you'll be able to find a rate that works for you. It's just one of the many ways you could save with Progressive. Get your quote today at Progressive.com and see why four out of five new auto customers recommend Progressive. Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. All right, everybody. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. And we all know relationships take work, especially the most important relationship you have in your life, which is your relationship with yourself. And if you're like me, you know, and a lot of other people out there, you'll go to any length to help someone you care about. I mean, we go out of our way to treat other people well, but how often do we give ourselves the same treatment? You know, we invest in ourselves through exercise, people take on coaching, research, reading books, taking development courses for work. But what about investing in the tools you need for your emotional well-being so that you can flourish in your relationship with yourself and with other people? This month, BetterHelp Online Therapy wants to remind you that you matter just as much as everyone else does. And therapy is a great way to make sure you show up for yourself. And a big part of me going to therapy every single week is, yeah, learning how to be kind to myself and not let my internal critic or my fears or my feelings take over and having the tools to greet those parts of myself with kindness, with care, with love. And then that carries to everyone else I come in contact with. BetterHelp is online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Give it a try and see why over 2 million people have used BetterHelp online therapy. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp and Sleep with me listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash sleep with me. That's better help B E T T E R H E L P dot com slash sleep with me. Thanks everybody. All right everybody it is time for the sleepy supporter zone. One part of the podcast I need you to hear it's where I pop my peas. I thank the listeners who supported the sponsors. That's how the show is here free twice a week and I need your help with everything going on. We've had a pretty big pullback in our sponsorship and that is one of the big things that keeps the show free. So I need you to support sponsors and let them know about it. Free trials, uh, sign up for one of the free trials or support one of the sponsors, but also please tag them on social media, send them a letter, give them a call, let them know their partnership with Sleep With Me is valuable. This is critical to the goals of the show coming out twice a week for free for you. I want to thank Charlotte who did it with Bank Novo. Charlotte set her freelance business up with Bank Novo and is very happy, was very happy with the process and let them know about it. And I'll tell you what, people like Cameo's 
I will send you a video thanking you if you support a sponsor, even a free trial, share it on social media, tag the sponsor, tag me, and then fill out the form at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sponsors. I'll send you a video saying thanks. Scoots, sending you a video to say thank you because it's it's really important to me to keep the show free for everybody. So that's the first part of Sleepy Supporter Zone. Sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sponsors is where you find that form. The second part of Sleepy Supporter Zone is you getting the support you need right now. If you're in need of extra resources, uh, there's resources right in our show notes you can connect with. It's about being a part of positive change, saying Black Lives Matter, saying stop AAPI hate with our actions. There's links to resources you can connect with and learn more and take action right in our show notes. And it's about uh, stuff I support as well. And tonight I'm going to be talking about my one of my favorite podcasts, Here Be Monsters. And uh, episode one of season 10 just came out. Episode two is about to come out. And one of my favorite lines from uh, episode one is uh, the sting of being just another kid who didn't own a weather vane. Now, if you have not listened to Here Be Monsters, it's time to start listening to it. You can find it for free in most podcast apps. Here Be Monsters. Uh, There'll be a link to the website in the show notes. My friend Jeff makes the show. Jeff has been making the show independently since 2012. This is the 10th season of the show. And I'm going to kind of paraphrase from Jeff here. You know, the core idea of Here Be Monsters is the fact that Jeff is a person like a lot of us who's deeply afraid of the unknown. Uh, That's Jeff's biggest fear. And the show is a project to talk about fear and to talk about the unknown and to talk about things that are scary, but to talk about them in a context that feels safe and kind. So if you're new to Here Be Monsters, season 10, episode one is an amazing place to start, especially if you're a Sleep With Me listener who loves personal essays. And I hope you like the show, but once you listen to that episode, listen to episode two of season 10 and then work your way back. You got so much back catalog to work your way through uh, in the Here Be Monsters archive. The show's been around, like I said, since 2012. And there's some episodes that are interviews, some are documentaries, some are research projects, and some are kind of broadly experimental. But there's also episodes uh, like uh, season one, episode 10, Blowgun Time Warp. I've listened to it four times. uh, And each time I uncover another little piece of beauty. Uh, And it's a personal story where Jeff is trying to catch some little wisps of smoke that have been floating around in his head and mash them together into a shape and figure out what all that means. Uh, It's got so much relatable stuff in there. But if you haven't listened to stuff that I would consider audio art podcasts like Here Be Monsters, you deserve it uh, because that's what it is. It's sweet. It's wonderful. It also has all those other things we have deep inside, Uh, but it's art you get to connect with. Uh, And that is such an important thing right now. So please check out Here Be Monsters in your podcast app. Do it right now before you go to sleep. Then tomorrow, uh, check out season 10, episode one. Episode two should be coming out in a few days or it's already out now, depending on when you're hearing this message. And then you can go back through the archives. And if so, if you've never listened to a podcast like this, it is going to change how you listen to podcasts during the day. So check it out in your podcast app of choice. Here Be Monsters. And uh, I guess what what do you say uh, we get on with the show? Oh, Mystery Bard. A lot of people help out on this show. Who are they? Chris Posty Poster Song. Sounds like an earful. Wrote the theme song. Edits episodes. Carl W. The Lich. Also edits episodes. Ashley, Kenny, Scotty, Jennifer. Runner, 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 runner. Eric and the team let us down. They're on the website. I am the Mystery Bard. I do the lullabies, yeah. I do commissions at Jonathan Man the kindness shine straight on through when the listeners form their own facebook group keith stacy sarah julie and jennifer these are your moderators get support dear scooter on patreon buy the merch and support the sponsors you can find anything you want at sleepwithmepodcast.com and we're so proud Biscuit Lewis and I like banana Leah does the transcripts 
Thanks, Mr. Bard. Don't forget to sign up for our newsletter where we're helping people experiencing homelessness. There's going to be live performances from Sleep With Me, tons of cool uh, video extras, all for free, helping people experiencing homelessness. And that's at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash badmagic. Uh, thanks, everybody. Uh, scoots, take it from here. Future, so, yo, future Scoots or past. Uh, yeah. Anyway, let's get on with the show. Uh, hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep? Well, welcome. This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do it with a bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed, turn out the lights, and press play. I'm going to do the rest. But what I'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place where you could set aside whatever's keeping you awake, whether it's a thoughts the feelings, the physical sens- sensations, <laughs> mispronunciations, which also is a bonus. I didn't realize it. sensations and uh, mispronunciations rhyme. I, I mean, kind of. It would take some work to get it in a right, you know, couplets. Uh, hey, would you two like to be a couplet? Sensations and uh, what was the other word? Oh, mispronunciations. Maybe we'll come back to that. What am I going to do? I forgot what I was talking about. What, 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 if, if you're up all night tossing, turning, mind racing, I'm here to take your mind off of that. Uh, I'm going to create a safe place where you could set all that aside, whether it's uh, thoughts, uh, feelings, uh, physical sensations. I may have, may have repeated this, but uh, it's important to repeat. I'm here to help you. I'm here to keep you company. I'm going to send my voice across the deep, dark night. I'm going to use lulling, soothing, creaky, dulcet tones. Pointless meanders, superfluous dialogue, re- repetition. I get lost in my own thoughts. Holy cow. I mean, it's not a bad place. You know, sleepy thoughts are a good. It's a good thing to get lost in. Uh, and it's not really lost. It's more misdirected. They say, I know where I am. I'm in a safe place, a room uh, full of blankets on the walls above me, nice quilts. And all I'm here to do is uh, help you fall asleep. Welcome. If you're new, a few things to know about the show. One, structurally, that's one thing the new listeners, uh, it sometimes like is, is a little bit confusing because this show is structured as a sleep podcast. And what it means is the show starts off with a few minutes of business. That's how the podcast uh, stays free. Then around minute four or five, uh, an intro starts uh, and the intro is about 12 to 14 minutes of actual content. Uh, and the content is me introducing the podcast, kind of setting up how it works in a familiar way, but different every time. And a lot of listeners uh, listen to the, the intro as a part of their wind down routine. Uh, some people uh, listen to it and fall asleep. A few people skip it and uh, like uh, people listen during the day. Yeah, but if you're new, yeah, this is a bedtime story with a long lead-up or wind-down, so you can wind down. So it does take me a while to get to the story. If you want to skip ahead, it is about 18 minutes, but this is a regular listeners, the most regular listeners' favorite part of the show. I think mostly because it's the only part of the show. I, you know, a lot of people don't only hear this part of the show. But I'm going to be here till the bar- very end, or the very end, which I keep saying over and over again, because uh, Strawberry Shortcake, she, she appears and she says, I'll give you five bucks if you say Barry. And I say, and I say, this is how tricky she is. She's a trickster goddess, by the way, I'm pretty sure. Because they say, no, I'm not going to, I don't, you know, I don't take money to mispronounce words. And she laughs at that. I say, it directly. But then she's planted the seed, the berry seed in my brain. So then I still say, you know, I, I go, very good. And then I say, very good. Uh, but where was I? Oh, the intro. Yeah, you can skip ahead uh, or you, you can you can listen. Then after the intro, there's a little business tucked in between the intro and the show or the bedtime story. Tonight's story will be a recap of a, uh, what's that show called? Oh, Doctor Who, a Doctor Who episode. And it'll be a lulling, re, like, indirect recap, a pretty ha- a hazy recap. And then uh, some facts maybe I looked up if I was curious on the show. Then some thank yous at the end. 
All told, I'll be here for an hour. So if you're new, there's no pressure to listen to me or to make sense of what I'm saying because it's pretty. It's a little bit nonsensical, uh, and, and it doesn't make you say, "Well, why does the podcast take 14 minutes to get started?" And I say, "Well, it kind of already started. It's just a slow start. Like uh, get a build up, uh, get a build up momentum to slow it down." And you say, wait a second, did that make any sense? I say, it could, it could make sense. And then, okay, so there's a long intro, then the show. No pressure to listen. Also, no pressure to fall asleep. That's why I'm here for an hour. Uh, So I can keep you company while you drift off. Uh, So no pressure to listen, no pressure to fall asleep. But if you can't sleep, I'm going to be here. And you can queue up episode after episode if you need it. Uh, I don't know, because I really want to help you fall asleep. It's really important to me because I've been there. Or to keep you company if you can't sleep. Either way, you deserve something to kind of look forward to. Uh, your boar friend, your boar bud, your boar bud, bu- bay, boar sib, your boar bestie. If you're, if you're a regular listener, if you're new, those are things I'm applying to be. Uh, but yeah, no pressure. I'm here to help. Uh, and uh, here to, what were, words was I trying to rhyme? Mispronounce? Mi- mispronounce? No. I had two words. It was like bountiful and mispronounced, but those weren't the words. I already forgot the words I was trying to remember. I do, you know what word is nice is, uh, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing it is correctly, is iambic patam, patambiter. How come more words don't end in ambiter? Like, uh, like I'm not even kidding. What are, cam, cam, camber, tambiter, uh, patambiter. I'm trying to, like, uh, well, that would be a tough word to rhyme. If iambic pentameter, some witty person probably already did it. Uh, uh, oh, it's trying to put words in couplets. Uh, say, well, hey, how you doing? And then I know the poets out there are saying, "Scooch your," uh, and I say, "Yeah, I probably should move on." My poetry vocabulary uh, is limited, uh, and this podcast is not sublimited. Okay, really, did you get that? I, I rhymed to those things. Uh, I was just trying. I was just pandering to the lowest common denominator in my brain, who finds uh, that who found that hilarious. Uh, but yeah, I'm here to help. I'm here to take your mind off stuff. I was here to ry- try to rhyme those things, but I couldn't figure out what I was trying to rhyme. Uh, but yeah, I make a show uh, because I really, truly believe you deserve a good night's sleep. You deserve to take some of the ser- some of the seriousness out of bedtime for me to, you know, puff up your covers, uh, loosen them, uh, shake, shake them out, uh, to do the hokey pokey. What if people started doing the hokey pokey at bedtime? Maybe I, maybe that's, a new, have I ever done that on the intro? I mean, I've done it in some live shows. But like a, as part of a, maybe that could be a bedtime. Is a hokey pokey in in the public domain? Does anyone know? Uh, because that could be part of a nice bedtime r- routine with the podcast. You start the intro, uh, and you start listening to it, and then you kind of shake your. You know, well, I guess it, I don't tuck my sheets in, so I can shake my sheets very easily. My blankets. Uh, yeah, so you could do something like that, shake it all about when you're shaking your bed loose, uh, or you could puff it all about, and you do the sleepy uh, pokey, turn yourself around, bedtime's what it's all about, uh, uh, right pillow. I guess for, for someone like me that's single, this seems perfectly sensible. And if your partner's asleep, they, they'd be asleep anyway. If they're awake, they would probably be amused. Uh, and so, you know, we just do three rounds of it. One right turn, one left turn. And it's a soothing, slow way. With a little bit of dancing, though. I don't know. I think that does activate the chill-out receptors in our, in our brain and, and maybe even in our spirits. Uh, the hokey pokey is good for that. Uh, you say, okay, because I can see, can you see my, ma- you know, I've talked about on the podcast, I'm not sure I have the ability to move my hips, whatever the uh, mind-body connection between my mind and my hips is not active, but I can move my legs uh, and my arms. So I'm pretty good at doing the hokey pokey, part of the hokey pokey, but right, and put your, uh, 
left leg in and snuggle it right under the blanket uh, or toss it all about. You know, if you like your blankets tossed off of your feet. Believe it or not, last night, so I'd been testing, I've been testing this new thing uh, with a weighted blanket just over my feet and my legs. Uh, it, it was an accidental experiment one time, but then I found it comforting. And like I can pull my feet out or, or tuck them back under it. And I say, oh, that feel, there's something about it. And I'm not kidding. Like uh, it feels reassuring to me uh, to just have a little weight on my ankles and my lower legs. I don't know if uh, it keeps my legs from tossing and turning or not. Uh, but I had also noticed my temperature at night I was having trouble regulating it where I was getting too warm. But I had the room too cold, so I was, I've been having a trouble with the balancing of the uh, the room temperature and my temperature. And so last night I said, well, maybe it's because my feet are always under the blankets. Uh, and so I said, okay, let's uh, try. And they, So then I think I tried a night or two without the, the weighted blanket. And I said, well, I kind of miss that thing. And the moving blanket said, excuse me, moving blankets have feelings too. And I said, I, I kind of miss that wonderful blanket on my legs uh, uh, that I love so much. And I said, thank you. But I'm just wondering about my temperature. So then I tried having the blanket over my legs, but then my feet out from the bottom of my covers. And you know what? I, I uh, slept great. I don't know. You know, it could be a placebo or it just could be whatever. But uh I don't know why I shared that, but if you have a weighted blanket, uh, and you give it a test, uh, let me know how it is. I, I love it. I highly recommend it. You could also do it with like, uh, you know what you could do it with is one of those things, uh, in the winter you used to keep the draft out. Maybe you don't need a weighted blanket. One of those draft things, uh, it's usually full of, uh, like, you know what I mean? It's like a round, uh, long thing, and you stick it under your door, like on the bottom of your door, so a draft doesn't come through. Uh, usually it's like round with material. Like, like a, maybe you could try that. Uh, maybe not, though. Maybe just try the weighted blanket. Uh, but that's one way I soothe myself. I don't normally share these type of tips, especially when they're in the beta phase. Uh, but I just thought of it. So anyway, I'm here to help. I'm here to take your mind off stuff. I'm here to keep you company. And uh, because I've been there, just like, uh, you know, even these temperature things sometimes, uh, it's important. Your good sleep is important to me uh, because I want you to be out there in the world flourishing. And that's why I work very hard and I strive and I yearn. And I really appreciate your time. Thank you for coming by. Uh, And uh, here's a couple of ways we keep the show going. All right, everybody, it is time to talk about tonight's sponsor, Relief Band. And I don't know about you, but, you know, my tummy tum-tum used to start to bother me when I was stressed about not being able to get to sleep or when I was overthinking or when I was exhausted the next day and had a lot of stress. And there is nothing worse than feeling nauseous. And if you've ever experienced nausea, whether it's from stress, uh, you know, a boat trip, something you ate, or even nausea brought on by something else like anxiety medication, you know how quickly your body body can turn from comfortable to those cold sweats in that crisis mode. I don't know if you knew this, but one out of three Americans regularly suffer from nausea. I'm definitely one of those one in three. And you got to check out Relief Band. I have a Relief Band in my car, charged at all times. Relief Band is a number one FDA cleared anti-nausea wristband that has been clinically proven to quickly relieve and effectively prevent nausea and vomiting associated with motion sickness, anxiety, migraines, hangovers, morning sickness, chemotherapy, and so much more. And the way it works, Relief Band stimulates a nerve in the wrist that travels to the part of the brain that controls nausea. Then it blocks the signal your brain is sending to your stomach telling you you're sick. And it's like the name says, it's legitimately a band you wear on your wrist to give you the relief from nausea. It's that simple. The technology was developed over 20 years ago in hospitals to relieve nausea. And like I said, when I get in a car, whether I'm working on the podcast, reading emails, or reading a book, sooner or later, I'm going to feel all those feelings. And it feels like I've lost total control. Uh, <laughs> you like, I can, I'm feeling the cold sweats right now just thinking about it. All I do is put the relief band on, turn it on. 
I mean, I love that, but I love sharing it with somebody else. Relief Band makes a great gift for any time of the year. Right now, they've got an exclusive offer just for Sleep With Me listeners. If you go to reliefband.com and use a promo code SLEEP, you'll receive 20% off and free shipping and a no questions asked 30-day money back guarantee. That's the best offer you'll find for Relief Band anywhere. But you have to use the code SLEEP. So head to R-E-L-I-E-F-B-A-N-D dot com and use our promo code SLEEP for 20% off plus free shipping. Thanks, everybody. All right, everybody. It is time to talk about a brand new sponsor. I am so excited about working with Athletic Greens. And I have been taking Athletic Greens AG1 every single morning. I take a scoop of AG1, put it in water, and mix it up. It is absolutely delicious. And AG1 is a small micro habit with big benefits. It's the one thing you can do every single day to take great care of yourself. Athletic Greens has it figured out. With one scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help start your day. And this special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, your recovery, focus, and aging. And it's simple. I just take a scoop of AG1, I put it in a glass of water, I stir it up, and I have it first thing in the morning. It tastes so good. It's got this nice tropical taste to it. And I start my day feeling right. I feel like my energy is higher and my focus carries all the way into my afternoon workout. You know, tons of people take some kind of multivitamin, and it's important to choose one with high quality ingredients your body will actually absorb. Athletic Greens was created when the founder realized how difficult it was to create an optimal nutrition routine on your own. Own. And now you don't have to. You just take your scoop of AG1 every single morning, and it's like you're investing in an all in one nutritional insurance. I just love how easy it is. It tastes great, and it's the first thing I drink every morning. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition, especially heading into the flu and cold season. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, as Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash sleep. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash sleep to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. That's athleticgreens.com slash sleep. Thanks, everybody. Uh, hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep? Well, welcome to Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. Uh, we do it with a bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed, turn out the lights, and press play. I'm going to do the rest. What I'm going to attempt to do is uh, create a safe place where you could set aside whatever's keeping you awake. It could be thoughts, uh, feelings. Uh, physical sensations, changes in time or temperature, uh, changes in routine, you know, whatever it is uh, that's uh, keeping you up, uh, you know, like so stuff you're thinking about, anything you're experiencing physically or that's coming up for you emotionally, uh, those are three of the zones, but it could be, you know, it could be some of the travel, uh, whatever's keeping you awake, I'd like to take your mind off of that. What I'm going to do is I got this nice, safe place here set aside, reserved, uh, and it's only it's one of the first uh, like uh, you uh, are a VIP, and that means you uh, like uh, where you say, "Hey, come on in." This this safe place is welcoming, opening. It's not exclusive, but it has a feeling. You know, believe it or not, we do have, I don't know if you've, you're familiar with the Muppets, uh, but you, you might not believe this because it's probably uh, not, not exactly true, but it's imaginarily true. Is uh, You know the Muppets, they had a Muppet show, so that was like a regular gig. And then the Muppets, I, I got to get back to the intro, but then the Muppets had, um, now they're in movies, right, from time to time. And not every Muppet is like, you know, a Kermit, Miss Pig, you know, the big draws. You know, there's Muppets that are on the um, lower on the marquee or the posters, right? And those Muppets may or may, may not take side jobs or freelance gigs. 
Ian, I'm just saying if any Muppets did, uh, Bunsen, Dr. Bunsen, Honeydew, and Beaker would probably uh, be running a Sleep With Me Labs uh, somewhere. And they would be the ones working on that. Uh, what did I say? Exclusive, where it feels exclusive. Uh, you say, well, I've never, uh, here's the things with me. I've never been on a cruise, never been to Sandals or Club Med. Or the one with all the romance where everybody's, you know, where the, the, the couple looks like they're, uh, I don't know, is that Sandals or is this, is, was that in the 80s? Uh, I know I've seen an ad where they, this, this couple looks like they, they say, well, that looks exclusive. You know, or club level. I haven't stayed at club. I don't, I don't spend a lot of time at club levels uh, or private clubs, but uh, or clubs in general. What was my point? Oh, so but when you think about those things, you think about, ooh, it feels exclusive. Uh, that's what this safe place feels like. You're, you're important because your sleep's important, and it's important to me. Also, it's important to me to go off topic early. So I'm going to create a safe place where you could set aside whatever's keeping you awake, whether it's thoughts, feelings. Oh, I said that. physical. Oh, what I'm going to do is uh, send my voice across the deep, dark night, get mixed up, go off topic. I'm going to use a lulling, soothing, creaky dulcet tones, uh, pointless meanders, uh, superfluous tangents, you know, so, uh, other stuff, uh, stuffing, a lot of stuffing, filler, fluff, uh, all that stuff. Uh, you say, when to, I wonder if a Muppet has ever written like one of, like an ode, an ode to my stuffing. Who would, who would, who would do the odes? I'm sure they're actually the pro, maybe Sam the Eagle, but that would be a little bit more of a, patriotic ode i don't think i mean fozzy would do a joke ode I mean, gonzo possibly miss P miss piggy would do one probably but that would go so oh anyway oh who are the muppets oh boy you missed out uh but never too late to discover them in fact i think uh the mystery bard watches the muppet show and has encouraged me to rewatch the muppet show with my daughter and i i take i take that advice uh I'm taking that advice to heart. Okay, but where was I? I'm going to send my own oh, lulling, soothing, creaky dulcet tones, pointless meanders. If you're new, sorry, yeah, welcome. Sorry about that. I've gone off. Uh, I guess I've like I got I just uh, I don't know. Maybe it's uh, I've had rainbow connection recently with the Muppets or something. As yeah, hardy har har. Okay, if you're new though, uh, welcome. I'm glad you're here. This podcast is a bit different, so I want to set up a couple things for you. One, I'm glad you're here. Your sleep or taking your mind off stuff, keeping you company, uh, that's important to me. So I'm going to be here just to take your mind off stuff. So here's the thing. No pressure to listen to me. You can fall asleep whenever you want. You could listen however you want. Some listeners will listen close. Some listeners listen kind of uh, amused or bemused. Uh, some listeners imagine me like uh, with a Muppet on no one's I don't know if anyone's ever imagined me sitting with a Muppet on my knee. You say Muppet on your knee, thousand dollar fee. And it's a great way to they say, Well, that's just how my brain works. It goes from uh, one thing to another. Uh wa oh, that was water on the knee. Thank you. Um but here's the thing. I mean, oh, you don't need to listen to me. Okay, that's one thing if you're new. Second thing is, there's no pressure to fall asleep. These shows are an hour plus, because uh, I'm here to keep you company as you drift off. I'm more here as your companion, walking at your side, providing you with some friendly ba banter and distraction as you drift off. Uh, because I really, truly believe you do deserve a good night's sleep, but I feel like there's too much pressure around that, right? Uh, uh, you deserve it. Uh, and I just want to ease you into it. So no need to listen, no pressure to fall asleep. And structurally, what to expect. The show starts off with a few minutes of business. That's how we keep a podcast free and coming to everybody. Uh, then uh, we have an intro. The intro is kind of like a bedtime wind down. It's like a 12-minute uh, show within a show uh, where I slowly guide you towards bed to bedtime. Like some listeners listen to the intro while they get ready for bed. Some listeners listen to the intro while they're in bed, drifting off. Some listeners fall asleep to the intro. A few percentage of listeners skip the intro. And a lot of people, or more and more people, listen during the day. I guess particularly to the intros, but sometimes to the stories too. 
for a little break during the day too. Uh, but the intro is where I try to explain what the podcast is to the new listener every time. And this is where it is but like a Muppet show or a Muppet movie. Or just like uh, the word Muppet, if you didn't like, you say, what? well, I don't know what a Muppet is, but I know what that word sounds like. And you'd say, Scoots, it sounds like when you're trying to explain what the podcast is for the 775th time. And you try. Uh, so it's like the up it part, but you never get there, which is like the m- 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 part. And I say, exactly. It's a part of my, it's actually part of my method. Actually, that's why it's a real, you know, totally intentional that I say, one day I'm going to find the perfect metaphor for a podcast. It turns out that the, whatever this Muppet based metaphor isn't the perfect one, especially since I don't even remember what my original point about the Muppets was. It was something, uh, Oh, Bunsen. Oh, because they have Bunsen, Honeydew, and Beaker. I'm imagining if they worked for me on the side, you know, like uh, they would be designing new meanders for me, you know, creaky dulcet tones, making a safe, comfortable place. Uh, Of course, then you'd say, well, Scoots, I've watched those Muppet movies. What about all the unintended consequences? And I'd say, well, doesn't that usually just happen to Beaker? Beaker's the, like, uh, Beaker's resi- talk about, oh, here's another totally unrelated thing, but in, in some sense connected. And I don't know if that, there was, so there was an app a while back, Super Better. I'm not sure if that's out there. It was trying to teach people resiliency and the importance of resiliency. And that's considered the sport and part of, like, uh, uh, I guess, like, integrated with self-care and mindfulness and, and, uh, in flourishing is resiliency, right? Uh, how come, uh, here's the thing, this is a free idea that you will, you know, they will free, you know, try a trial offer with, if you use it, please give me a, and the, 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 the giant corporation that owns the rights, you know, with full, full, equal financial stakes. Uh, but how come uh, uh, beakers not used in every resiliency metaphor or, You'd see, is there a resiliency institute? Well, one does Bunsen Honeydew run it? Probably. Uh, but if there was like the resilient resiliency, like the mo- a model of resiliency, like you got the modern major general, modern major, you know, that one, you'd say, who, who, what's a model? And you say, well, there's beakers in a, a puppet scooter. And I'd say representative model of resiliency, the beaker story. How about that? Beaker, a model of resiliency. Okay, maybe, possibly, right? Uh, so Beaker is a character in the Muppets that was like the foil to Dr. Bunsen Honeydew's uh, the grand plans to uh, help the human condition through science. Emotionally through, actually through mechanics and science, usually. Okay, so, and I'm here to just help you uh, with meanders. So, oh, structure with respect. So the intro goes on and on and on. Eventually, it peters, peters out, uh, not, uh, not that long from now. Uh, then, believe it or not, we'll go from talking about Muppets to, to me trying to remember uh, all the plot lines. In 45 minutes, I'll try to remember everything that happened on Game of Thrones and the, uh, all the seasons. And that should be pretty sleepy because my recall is uh, not excellent. Uh, but really, this podcast, uh, and then, so there's uh, the intro, uh, some business, then the story or a Game of Thrones discussion. Be very vanilla, don't worry. And then some thank yous at the end. If you want to skip the ads, you just become a patron. It's in podcast.com slash patron. Um, what else? Uh, uh, I think that's it, a structure of the show. I thought there was something else I was going to remember that was Muppet related. Yeah, but I, I don't know. So, 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 yeah, podcast is here to keep you company and to take your mind off stuff. And, and oh, because I really do believe uh, I want you to be resilient. I want you to be rested and, and, and be able to go out there tomorrow and flourish. Uh, to be in a place where, you know, as you're drifting off or as you're getting ready to bed, bed you can say, you know, it's, it's not easy being you. But you do deserve a nice resting, uh, safe place, a nice place to r- relax into, and a, a nice night of uh, solitude or whatever you call it. Uh, 
uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Like, my, I, I've got my, you know, my, my vocabulary is limited because they said, what's the, like, uh, I, I mean, maybe part of me is like, we got to get a hold of the big resiliency count, the resiliency council to get up and tell them about Beaker. But the thing is, as I said, I believe you deserve a good night's sleep. I believe you deserve a life uh, where you, you can you get, get out there and flourish, uh, where you feel treated with dignity and respect and, you can do the same and, 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 you know, create, water some flowers out there in the world, you know? And so I hope I can help. Uh, and I really appreciate you coming by and checking out the show. It is a bit different. So give it a few tries. Almost every regular listener says it took a few tries uh, till it worked. Uh, but I really appreciate it that you came by. Uh, you're on a nice drive and I really hope I can help you fall asleep. Uh, so thanks again for coming by. And here's a couple of ways we keep the show going. Uh, hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep? Well, welcome. This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do it with a bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed, uh, turn out the lights, and press play. I'm going to do the rest. What I'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place where you could set aside whatever's keeping you awake. Uh, whether those are thoughts, uh, feelings, uh, physical sensations, you know, changes in time, temperature, uh, like just, just stuff. You know, you probably, everybody's got stuff going on. Sometimes the stuff keeps us awake, right? Now, you don't have any, here's, here's something. I've talked about stuff before. But no stuffed stuff in bed. Like, especially, here's one thing you should not have in bed with you. Stuffed shells. Holy moly. And that could mean, I mean, originally I was thinking of the pasta shells that are stuffed. uh, But also if you get just stuffed stuffed shells, like sand, like what else would you stuff shells with? Well, sand most likely. Some shells come stuffed with their own shells. Or crustaceans, of course. Excuse me. Uh, All the hermits of the world. Uh, do, do, you, are you stuffed in there? You're more, uh, we, are you wedged in there? No, you just live there. Okay, great. I'm here with the hermit crab. Uh, actually, could I get back to you? Cause this, I think we could probably create a metaphor for the podcast, but I got to get to the intro maybe later, dude. Okay. Well, uh, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to send my voice across the deep, dark night. I'm going to use lulling, soothing, creaky, dulcet tones, pointless meanders, superfluous tangents, uh, 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 senseless dialogue, possibly, with a hermit crab. And all of it's to take your mind off stuff and help you fall asleep. If you're new, I'm glad you're here. And let me try to uh, give you a couple heads up here. Uh, this is a podcast that's really silly, so that's one thing. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So if you're fir- if this is your first listen, uh, see if you could uh, just passively kind of watch it go by. Almost a bit like, uh, well, I guess sometimes I've seen hermit crab races. But this would more be like, uh, if you're, let's just say you're totally relaxed, you're chilling on the beach, and a hermit crab... Uh, is is at a safe distance because I know that might not be everybody's thing. It's just you know crawling or moving around. You'd say, huh? They go oh, moved a little bit to the left, uh, and then it went back down as a shell. Was that a shell or was that? Oh, there it goes. It moved two, two inches and then sat back down. Oh, the hermit crab's interrupting me. Oh, that's not what you do. Okay, well, it's a metaphor. Thanks. Uh, uh, but just kind of consume this podcast. Uh, see if you can consume it passively. No pressure. Here's just structurally what to expect. Show starts off. This is the first uh, divergent path of the podcast. Is that the show starts off with a uh, few minutes of business. And then it has an intro. Intros are around 12 minutes, uh, anywhere from 12 to 14 to 16 to 18 to 17 to 15 to 13, sometimes 11 minutes uh, of uh, me explaining what the podcast is, but it really is for most listeners, a a part of the show. Uh, So if you're new kind of give, here's the thing you give the intro a few times, a few times too. But eventually if once you find how you like to listen, some listeners skip ahead to the story about 18 minutes. Uh, Some listeners start the shows are getting ready for bed. 
And then a lot of people, they just listen to the intro as they wind down. Some listeners fall asleep within the fir- first few minutes. Uh, but there's no pressure. But the intro is kind of a show within a show. I guess that's my thing. Or that's what I was trying to explain. Then there's uh, some business between the intro and the show. Or the, uh, yeah, the story portion. And then tonight, yeah, it'll be a bedtime story. And at the end of the show are some thank yous. That's structurally what to expect. This is one of the few podcasts you, you don't need to listen to it. Uh, you could kind of listen to it. And you, you, generally the reaction I'm shooting for is like, huh, uh, hermit crab, eh? Like they say, Scoots, w- tell us about, you know, a lot of podcasts have exciting guests on, you know, founders, you know, explorers in space, you know, leaders of uh, uh, great movements and uh artists, uh, groundbreak, visionaries. Well, well, I had a hermit crab on. Well, kind of. The hermit crab uh, was intermittent. In, I, I had an intermittent interview with the hermit crab. Uh, but so, oh, but this is the only podcast you don't need to listen to. That's what I was saying. Where you go, hmm, hermit crab, eh? That's what I was saying. Uh, like that should be, your, could be a reaction to the whole podcast, you say. Huh, sleep with me, eh? Yeah, I think I fell asleep to it. Uh, yeah, other than that, I don't recall. Uh, so that's, uh, uh, oh yeah, so that's a structure show. Don't need to listen. But here's the other thing. You don't need to fall, there's no pressure to fall asleep. You don't need to. You can when you do. And what I mean by that is the shows are about an hour. Because uh, I'll be here so you drift off at your leisure. I'm here to keep you company as you drift off, uh, to escort you to walk at your side, to take your mind off of stuff with my silly banter. And just in case you can't sleep, uh, I want you to know I'm going to be here till the very end, uh, putting it, putting in my time. Uh, uh, oh, wait, the hermit crab's interrupting me. Oh, you didn't have anything to add. Okay. If you have any comments, just interrupt me. Okay, I'm doing great. Wow. This is the last thing I expected a hermit crab to say to me. Oh, go ahead. Great job. Okay. Wow. There's nothing crabby or hermity about this hermit crab. That's funny. Oh, no. I, was, I mean, I'm serious. Uh, usually, I mean, I, honestly, I didn't, we, even when I thought uh, well, I would interview a hermit crab, I thought it'd be more interesting. I was thinking more about that you live in a shell. It, then they, I mean, maybe the hermits, I didn't even think about the crabby stuff till you were just so nice to me. Uh, yeah. Um, but I can imagine you're like, uh, you're probably used to sand. This, oh, no, sand still can bug you. Yeah. Cause what I was telling the listeners was no stuffed shells in bed. Yeah, exactly. Right. You wouldn't want like whatever, is that ricotta cheese in there? You don't know. Cause you're a crab. Of course not. Uh, but, like, uh, you wouldn't want any shells, oh, well, they'd be more filled with stand, sand than stuffed with sand. You're probably right about that. You're a really observant hermit crab. Comes with the territory. Yeah, I bet you have a good view, because you're, you're, you're really, you really have your, uh, whatever they have. Do they, is there a term, like, nose to the ground, eye on the floor or something? Because that really makes me think of you. Well, anyway, I, get, I don't even know what I was telling the listeners, though. Okay, that I could, they could, oh yeah, I'm going to be here till the end if you can't, if, if you can't fall asleep. And the reason I make the show is because I've been there tossing and turning and I know how it feels. And, and for me, I just want something to take my, you know, a little bit of company and a little bit of uh, redirection to say, hey, Scoots, uh, seems really frustrating. You can't sleep there. Don't even know why, huh? Wow, that's irritating. Um, anyway, I believe it or not, uh, I, I could tell you a story. I've been talking to this hermit crab and I, would, I could tell you about it, uh, instead of, oh, wow, really? Will you talk to a hermit crab? Yeah. It, it, well, it came on the podcast that we make, uh, but, or will, uh, well, wait, I was supposed to, I'm so I'm here for you. Yeah. Well, yeah. It was a really nice, believe it or not, the crab was neither crabby nor hermity. Uh, yeah, it was, it was actually cool. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. You are a cool crab though. One cool crab, the hermit crab. You, who, what, like, uh, do, do, do people still get hermit crabs? Uh, yeah, they do. 
do you need, uh, like, cause I was just thinking if I had a store, like I'd say, well, that's one cool crab, the hermit crab. Uh, come on in Saturdays only. It's crab day. Oh, every day's crab day. Yeah, well, you'd probably rather be on the beach, huh? Yeah, so I guess I won't have a store. Um, okay, well, I guess, like, that's it. So I guess we shared the same advice. You, uh, I guess it's harder to work with a, a friendly character, believe it or not. You're just too, you're too, uh, you're too kind. No, you are, Crab. You know what would be funny is, uh, here, here's an idea. Like, this is a thought experiment. You know, just me... And you, Hermit Crab, Do you, are you familiar with the Muppets? You are. This is great news. Great news, then. I don't know if this has ever happened on the Muppet Show, so I guess this would be fan fiction. But what if there was an episode where you came... Well, no, okay, I, I had one idea, but it already changed. Uh, what if there was an episode... This probably did happen. Uh, you're familiar with Miss Piggy and Kermit, right? Okay, great. You know, you think you know where I'm going. Well, I guess originally I was thinking, what if there was an episode where you and Miss Piggy started seeing one another romantically? Yeah. But then I was thinking it'd be more likely that Miss Piggy would kind of hire you uh, to kind of make Kermit feel jealous, which I think has probably happened before. I just can't picture it. And then she could say, she could call you her Hermie, you know, Hermie, like Kermie. Yeah, I mean, it just, they they have, it has a ring to it. You're right, especially in Miss Piggy's voice. Uh, and that's the only, that's one of the only celebrities I do, which I can't do on the podcast is Miss Piggy, but, but I can only do a uh, high ya when she karate chops. Uh, that's the only Miss Piggy I can do. That you could, you can imagine I sound just like her. Yeah, just like that. And then I, I can say something, something frog, but I can't actually say any words. But I can kind of almost get it when she says, that's right, frog. Like, that's my bedtime Miss Piggy voice. But that's just an idea. Anyway, I got to get back <laughs> I get back to the listeners. Uh, it's been great, Hermie. Her, her, uh, uh, it's just weird that I was calling you Hermie, and then there's a band Herman and Herman Hermits or something that has nothing to do with hermit crabs. Okay, well, that's great to know, too. I can move on then. So anyway, I'm glad you're here if you're a new listener. This podcast is a bit different, uh, but it's really here to just keep you company and take your mind off stuff. A bit goofy. If you don't like it, if you've listened this long, I mean, almost every listener, and we, we've got a decent amount of listeners, uh, including a decent amount of people I hear from that have been listening since the show, like, for six years. Um. Uh, but, uh, like every listener, what I mean is like every listener that's a regular listener says, you got to listen to it two or three times, uh, it, like before you decide, make a judgment on the podcast, I guess. And that's not really for my benefit, it's just for your benefit. Like if it, cause if it can help you, that's great. Uh, you get put to sleep and you get some comfort, but if you, this is your two, two or three tries or right away, there are some people that right away they say this podcast isn't for me. Uh, I have some sleepwithmepodcast.com slash no thank you. Uh, and they'll have some other resources. There you go to try to help you fall asleep. Uh, so that's, that's what I guess that's why I'm here is, uh, to take your mind off to keep you company and help you fall asleep. Uh, I really appreciate you coming by and checking out the show. I work very hard. I yearn and I strive. Uh, and what do you say? We keep the show going. These are a couple ways we do that. Uh, hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble, getting to sleep, trouble, staying asleep? Well, welcome. This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do it with a bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed, turn out the lights and press play. We'll do the rest. What I'm going to, to attempt to do is create a safe place where you could sit aside whatever's keeping you awake. You know, if it's uh, things you're thinking about from the past, present, or future, things on your mind, you know, rumination type stuff. Uh, hopefully not any runes uh, that you're translating. You know, no rune. Here's this is the newest rule for the podcast, no runes in bed. Also, I'll try to decipher what that is. Hardy, that was an accidental pun, too. You know what can go in your bed? Accidental puns. 
I mean, like, uh, that's a great, especially, like, uh, whether you're alone or with somebody. Nothing says fun, like an accidental pun. Now available uh, for free. Pun, accidental puns, they're always free. Accidental pun shop everywhere where people are accidentally funny by just being themselves like scoots. Uh, what was they saying, though? Oh, uh, create a safe place where you can set aside whatever you're thinking about, especially, like, if you're trying to come up with Pun, puns on purpose that takes a lot of work i think i proposed this as a book title but the accidental punist uh if that's not a book title i just legally reserved it for all you know hopefully the accidental i, I had this is not a joke and i already have gone way off topic early but the other day i was like writing out ideas for the podcast and i thought of a idea for the accidental tourist two. And I don't think it was the accidental punist. It was something else. Uh, and I don't know if I actually, I don't know if I wrote it down or I said, hmm. And then I said, probably not, Scooch. You didn't write accidental tourist. So, and I said, you're right. Moving on. Okay. So, stuff you're thinking about, stuff you're feeling, uh, emotion, like it could be emotions coming up uh, related to your thoughts or just in general. You know, we just have feelings. Uh, or physical sensations uh, that, that could, you know, any of those things, anything else that could be affecting your sleep in the present, past, or future, whatever it is I'd like to take your mind off of it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be here uh, for over an hour. And if you need me, back-to-back -back episodes all night long. And I'm going to send my voice across the deep, dark night. I'm going to use lulling, soothing, creaky, dulcet tones, pointless meanders. I think you just glimpsed two or three pointless meanders really early in the show. So if you're new, you're, you were in for your, depending on your definition of a treat, which would probably be a wide definition in this case. Except, you know, in some countries they say it's a treat, you know, the, like it means different things. Oh, no, my, my translation brain said it means kind of the same thing. Okay, well, it works a treat. That's what some people say in the UK about this podcast. My brain, my critical brain's disagreeing with me, even though it's a fact. Okay, but I understand that I went off topic. Or, okay, what was I saying? Oh, uh, send my voice across the TV. Oh, look, pointless meanders. That was weird. I said pointless meanders, then I went on a pointless meander. Superfluous tangents. A whole lot of other stuff. What I'm going to really do is keep you company as you drift off into sleep, take your mind off of stuff. And as you drift into the arms of Morpheus, uh, maybe sometimes also I'll use words in, you know, more than one, the same context, more than one time or slightly different contexts. If you're new, I'm glad you're here. A couple of things to get you. Uh, this podcast is a little bit different or a lot bit different. Uh, even than other sleep solutions, because this is more of like a fr friendly banter where I'm here to keep you company and take your mind off stuff. I think I covered that. Uh, so structurally, what to expect. Show starts off with a few minutes of business. Thanks for listening to that. That's how we keep the show free. Uh, then there's an intro, which we're in. Intro kind of doesn't make a lot of sense, and it's hard to make sense of. Uh, but it, for a lot of listeners, it's a wind down. For a small percentage of listeners, they skip it. And then for a small percentage of listeners, they fall asleep during it. And then another percentage of listeners listen during the day uh, to, to calm down. But, but, but the intro is like about 12 minutes of me, I guess, rambling, just like I am now. It, it, like where I'm trying to, I think this is oblique, like I mean, also accidentally oblique. They'd say, what, what, were, what are the opening lines of uh, the accidental punist, uh, Scoots? Uh, something, something accidentally oblique. I don't, I don't have, I, those are two of the opening words, but not the most opening words. They're part of the opening sentence. Uh, because when I try, when I'm doing the intro, I try to explain what the podcast is right up front, like I am now. But then I just naturally go off topic, and that's what puts people to sleep or uh, helps you wind down. So the intro is a show. With, it's a part of the podcast. Uh, it's a, it's an intro. It's just a uh, long and meandering, but it is full of it's chock full of content. It's chock full of meanders. 
It's the accidental meanderist. That's that's would be my bio, one of my many autobiographies. Uh, maybe somebody else could write that. You're right. Uh, well, maybe one of the imaginary beings within my brain who could get to work and actually do something. Hint, hint, hint. No, you, you're just okay. And now you're pulling the Waldler and Stad, Stadorf or whatever their names are. Stadler and Wardorf. What if Worf hung out with Stadler and Waldorf? Those are the critics on uh, the Muppet Show. I think it, you, it could go either way. Like Worf could sit with them and get along and be laughing, or it could be, uh, you know, they could, you know, meet the wrong side of a Klingon. That's also that was actually like a that was a tingler I wrote the wrong side of the the wrong side of a Klingon. Okay, enough about me. So uh, that's the intro of the show. I guess was I was saying. Then there'll be a little business between the intro and the story. Then tonight will be our episodically modular series, uh, uh, Big Farm in the P.I., Big Farm in the P.I., Big Farm in the Sky, P.I., Season 2, the Phantom Minnow Season. Yeah, then we have some thank yous and good nights at the end. If you ever want to skip the ads and the thank yous and stuff, you just become a $5 on a patron. Uh, so that's the structure of the show. Uh, if if uh, Then a couple of rules around the show, including that new rule uh, uh, that we just came up with. But the fir- you don't need to listen to this podcast. You can just kind of barely pay attention. Or you can listen. There's a, a lot of people that listen. Uh, I mean, like, like, like collectively. But percentage-wise, yeah, most people fall asleep. But I'm here to the end to keep you company because there is no pressure to fall asleep. I'm here. You could run episode after episode. If you can't sleep, I'll be here to really to uh, barely entertain you. But to be here, I, you know, I got a whole story coming up about uh, pop-up shops in a retirement community. Oh, boy. Talk about action. It, it'll be kind of, uh, won't be action-packed. Like I said, whatever other joke I made about the chock full of meander packed. That'll be like the commitment. If I become, if we ever like form a, like a, a group, uh, you'll have to sign the meander pact. You will have joined Scoots's, uh, Scoots's club where everybody goes out and tells bedtime stories and helps one another, treats people with dignity and respect and kindness. Had to sign the meander pact. What's the meander pact? Well, let me tell you about it, actually. Have a seat, uh. First off, before we get to the meander pack, did you know the sleeping podcast? There's no pressure to fall asleep and no pressure to listen. He's there around an hour. Well, I thought you were going to tell me about the meander pack. Oh, yeah. Also, another thing I was thinking of was uh, Scooch's famous rule that he came up with in 20, 2019 uh, that, that uh, no runes in bed. Of course, Scoots always was someone that mixed up R-U-N-E-S's and R-U-I-N-S's. And even when he said it, it always kind of ran together. But we all knew what he meant, kind of. You know, that you shouldn't, you know, keep take that Rosetta Stone, put it in the freaking other room. Like, we don't need it in the bedroom. You know, no rune-covered sarcophagi or tablets or even, you know... You say, who gave you a rune color? They say, well, my dear, this is a this pillow is rune covered. I have a rune based pillowcase. Okay, sorry, I don't want any runes in my bedroom. Period. A pillowcase, even bedding based runes or rune based bedding. It hasn't been deciphered. I'll be thinking about it. you know. Just keep the runes in other. You know, why don't you keep it in that room we use for the, all that stuff? Uh, the solarium? No, no, that's room for the plants. Uh, the observatory? No, that's room for the telescopes. It's the other one, like that has those in there. Oh, the room with the, oh the other all the other stuff in there. Right, all the other rune the rune rune out runarium. Oh, I thought that was the room where the room where Scoots pretended he was a, any of the famous runies. Well, that too. It's, that's why it's called the Runarium. It's for runes and rune. Ru, you know, yeah, that's the same room. Okay, I'll take all my runes out and put them in there. Okay, great. And then you can come back to bed after that. But yeah, I'm sorry. I don't have a lot of rules here. You know, no listening needed. No need to pay attention.
no pressure to fall asleep and, you know, keep, keep a runes and other things. Like we said, those compasses or whatever the heck you had when you were in uh, middle school, even protractors. Uh, sorry, I don't know what a protractor and a compass have to do with runes. Oh, no, I'm just in the middle of a tangent uh, because I signed the Meander Pact. I was just trying to, oh, sorry, I was just trying to tell you what a Meander Pact was. Are you sure it was a meander pack or in the middle of that meander? Did you forget what it was? Yeah, I got to go. Scoots, I'm going to turn it back over. So thanks. That was great. Uh, meander, by the way. Classic. Uh, also, you're right. No runes in bed. And I can hear the few people in the world that have rune-based professions. And I'd say it's bedtime. You know, time to take a breaky poo. He said, well, no, I'm a amateur runist. And it's. would <laughs> Okay, I'll make an exception for you if I could come observe you doing your amateur runing. And uh, are you writing runes or are you reading runes? Someone just in my brain, is an, they said I'm sculpting runes. And I'd say, that's awesome. But, you know, do your sculpting as part of your wind down. You probably shouldn't be sculpting in bed. Well, okay, I'm not one to, you know, I'm not one to, you're right. You may be able to sculpt in bed. Maybe just sculpt in your room. You really sculpt runes, eh? I think if I was a hip hopper, I would work that into one of my, you know, I sculpt rhymes like I sculpt runes, and I really do. And when I do, you know, the the, the, the something something swoons uh, when I'm sculpting runes. That was from my uh, that was a B side uh, sculpting runes. It was called. And then in parentheses, I put ruins uh, because it was like part of my, you know, it was one of my ones uh, for when I was doing like, a, like a, you know, freestyle stuff. Also, that was all imaginary. Anyway, I got to get back to you here. So if you're new, whew, that was, this is a pretty good intro because uh, this is what the rest of the show is going to be like, just more story based, uh, teetering on thousands of meanders. Uh, but really, it's a friendly show to take your mind off of stuff uh, and to keep you company either while you fall asleep or while you're in bed. And, and, you know, if you can't sleep, I'm your boar friend. I'm your boar bay. I'm your boar cuz. I'm your boar sib. Your boar bestie, if I could apply to be that. Uh, if we're in the San Diego region, your boar bruh. I'm here to help. Uh, that's the main thing because I've been there. Now, if you're listening, give it a few tries. So, I mean, there's a lot of people who listen to this podcast, and almost all of them say, hey, it took two or three tries before it worked for me or before I realized that there's no figuring this thing out. Because when he sculpted runes, it more looks like someone just made a oblong clay, clay. It's not a ball, but so that's what his runes look like. He's the one that ruined runes for me. I was an amateur runist until I heard his tangents about runes, and then it was ruined. Uh, I do delight in words, by the way. Sorry, not runes, uh, but uh, words I do. Is any restaurants based? Runes restaurant. Yeah, you're right. It won't work. It's, it's an easy one. Restaurant rune. Yeah, you wouldn't want to eat there. You'll, you'll say, that's the last place I ate. Uh, <laughs> What makes me laugh? I don't know. Uh, so I'm glad you're here. I hope you can pick that up in the tone of my voice. I'd really like to help. If the podcast, you gave it two or three tries and it doesn't work for you, or you're listening right now and you're like, uh, you're using other words about ruin or ruin about me, it's okay. Not a, it's not for everybody. Check out sleepwithmepodcast.com slash no thank you for some other options. But I really do hope this podcast helps uh, that it can take uh, some of seriousness out of bedtime, bring you some levity. Oh, uh, some part of my brain just said I'm sculpting a levity-based rune, and I'd say terrific. Uh, put it in the ru runarium. And uh, so I'm glad you're here. I really work hard. I strive and I yearn to help you fall asleep, and uh, thanks so much for coming by. Here's a couple of ways we keep the show uh, going. Uh, hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep? Well, welcome. This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do it with a bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed, turn out the lights, and press play. I'm going to do the rest. What I'm going to attempt to do 
is create a safe place where you could set aside whatever's keeping you awake, whether it's uh, thoughts, uh, feelings, you know, feelings like uh, emotions, uh, physical sensations. If you had a change in schedule or time or temperature, whatever's keeping you awake, I, I'd like to uh, take your mind off. I'd like to acknowledge uh, it could be anything, uh, but it's legitimate. Uh, there's a lot of people that listen to the show. And I, I don't know what everybody's going through, uh, but, uh, like I can relate. I know how it feels there in the deep, dark night and I'd like to keep you company. That's uh, basically the gist of the show. What I'm going to do is I'm going to send my voice across the deep, dark night. I'm going to use lulling, soothing, creaky, dulcet tones, pointless meanders, superfluous tangents, uh, extra, you know, extra stuff, uh, Extra, so many extra words. This is the one podcast where you'd say it could be five minutes, but there's so many bonus words uh, that uh, in extra words, it's kind of like oh, you know what? We'll, we'll, maybe we could. This could be a metaphor. Is when you go to that uh, the the big chain sandwich shop. Though there's other chain sandwich shops now, and other things built on that model. Maybe we'll talk about that as a metaphor for the podcast. If you're new, though, welcome. Here's a couple things. Uh, uh, this show's different. Give it a few tries to see if it works for you. Uh, structurally, the show starts off with business. That's how we keep it free. Then there's an intro. Intro is about 12 minutes. As you get through listening your first, second, third time, you'll see kind of the intro is a big part of the show. Uh, and uh, kind of uh, everybody uses the show and the intro in a different way. But the majority of listeners, the listeners they kind of wind down. Uh, as the intro's going, get ready for bed. It kind of get, just gives you a, it, it gets like, it, maybe I've never explained this. People always say the intro kind of developed into a 12 to 16 minute thing over time based on listener feedback. Uh, it, pardon me when I first started the show or, or times it's like, oh, it'd be cool if it went straight into the story. But then if you go straight into the story, then you're expected to kind of, uh, I don't know. It, it kind of doesn't help with the easing into bedtime, which is what kind of seems like it actually works. The drifting off to sleep uh, where I don't want anything to feel rushed. I want to give you room. And there is the fact that you could skip ahead. Normally it's around 18 minutes or so and, and get close to the beginning of the story and start listening in there. But there's also this idea that it's like, I'm glad you're here. Like, like one thing I've been learning is I'm becoming more of an adult. Uh, and trying to live more fully in this world is, uh, it's really important how you greet people. Uh, like the, the and I don't tend to be the most enthusiastic person, but I, I, I'm tending to notice, uh, the importance of enthusiasm. If you're glad to see someone letting that out and expressing it, uh, is a powerful thing. And it's a powerful thing to feel that in the other direction and be like, I'm really so glad to see you. It, it, like sometimes there's an unintentional meta communication going on there in like, uh, so greeting people in, in, in a way is that, that, uh, is, is equal to your feelings. Uh, I mean, sometimes you might be like, Hey, how you doing? Like, uh, I mean, cause you mean it, I don't know, but with me, I tend to do like, if I'm distracted and thinking about some, something else, uh, like, you know, worrying about, uh, filing papers or whatever, uh, and then I'm greeting someone, it might dampen down my natural enthusiasm for seeing them. And that's kind of what the intro is in some paradoxical way. It is a dampen down. It's, it's like I have such enthusiasm that you're here and that I get to try to put you to sleep. But at the same time, uh, the paradoxical arc is that uh, it, it realistically, I want to give you plenty of room to fall asleep. But at the same time, I want you to know that I really, truly am glad you're here. And then I'm trying to establish this as a safe place where you could set aside whatever's keeping you awake. Uh, so I think, uh, I think that's kind of the, oh, so if you're new, yeah, the show starts off with the intro, really 12 minutes to 14 minutes, uh, part of the show. And then we'll be talking about, uh, welcome back uh, to GOT. We'll be talking about season one of GOT or episode one season. I don't know. Is this season seven? I'm not sure. Cause I'm recording this before the episode comes out uh, to be ready. Uh, but so I'm glad you're here. I'm glad, uh, GOT's back. Uh, and you might say, well, I don't watch that show. Yeah, no problem. It'll be pretty, uh, 
it'll be a pretty tangential recap of the episode and things that came up during the episode. It'll also be uh, through the lens of sleep with me. So it'll be very uh, calming and soothing and meandering. And, you know, for the most part, the feedback I get is that, uh, wait a second, you were talking about, uh, that's what you were talking about? You thought you were talking about uh, the difference between gravy. So, huh, really? That was about, uh, like, uh, season six, episode eight. Actually, I don't think there were, maybe there were eight episodes in season six. I don't think so, though. So, possibly, I could have been talking about an episode that doesn't exist. That is possible. So, um, oh, so we'll talk about Game of Thrones. These episodes are super sized. Uh, they just happen to be, again, something that grew out of listener feedback and just making the show. Uh, so the Game of Thrones episodes, we'll, we'll talk about the episode. If we have time, we'll talk about things that came up in the episode. Like, uh, if there, like, let's just say, for example, yeah, there was something about gravy. I'd say, well, according to this, uh, the gravy must contain these things for, you know, if I, you know, Alton Brown's philosophy of gravy, this is imaginary, though I'm sure Alton Brown has it. Is it Elton Brown or Alton Brown? What about, uh, I wonder if Alton Brown likes Elton John. Also, they could be like, they could be, they could open up a, like any kind of business where you have people's names or like a publisher, Alton, Elton, uh, John Brown. Or Alton, or John Elton Brown, maybe. So, where was I? Oh, so I was talking about uh So we'll talk about the episode, then things that came up during the episode. Then we'll check in with Tom and Impounce. They have a fictional series. They're going to introduce a short fictional series, like uh, influenced by old time radio. Then we'll uh, check in uh, prayers to the old gods and the new. And I think that'll be it. Like that. That'll be. Uh, yeah, that'll be how we do it. I don't have a release schedule yet because uh, I'm still, like, as I'm preparing for the season to start, trying to decide if we're going to go every week or we're going to spread it out. Uh, so we have that going. I think uh, so that's the structure of the show. Also, if you're new, here's a couple of things. You don't need to listen to this podcast. Uh, you may have figured that out already. You can listen, uh, but you could also turn it down low. You could put it on the other side of the room. Uh, just kind of see what works for you as you start to use the show. This show is also no pressure to fall asleep. I'm going to be here over an hour for these Game of Thrones episodes. And uh, the, the, like uh, the whole idea of the show is uh, I'm here to keep you company as you drift off, to walk at your side as you fall asleep. Not so much to put you to sleep, but uh, to be your boar friend, your boar companion, your boar bay, your boar cuz, your boar sib. If you're from San Diego, you're Borbra, uh, to, to keep you, you to, to be here as you drift off, uh, to take your mind off of stuff and yeah, use a, all like a bunch of different things. Like kind of like if you're going to that, uh, uh, sub shop, uh, and you say, okay, uh, like, you know, w w if we're looking, viewing it through a neutral lens, you'd say, okay, well, I want some of those, you know, that uh, they say, okay, what about the squirty stuff? Oh yeah. Use the one, uh. Oh, that purple squirty stuff. Yeah, I'd like some of that. Uh, you could choose your type of, uh, you know, uh, what do they call it? What do they call it? A conduit? Uh, I'm trying to not to talk about F-O-O-D directly, even though I am. Uh, yeah, the delivery system for it. Uh, the structural, uh, the thing that offers it, the structural integrity. Squirty stuff. You got your, um, you get your building block or whatever, your, your uh, construction material. I don't know what you call that exterior. I guess that's some more of the, I don't know, your foundation. Oh no. So see, even that, I, I say, well, Scoots was going to describe it to us, but then he kind of got distracted, went off topic. Yeah. Uh, Cause he was trying to, that's how can I talk about game, game of Thrones too. So you get the, uh, you know, the, 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 uh, the feature, the feature material we'll call it. And then you have the, uh, the stuff that goes on it. Like you got your stuccos, your paint, your accoutrement, I think they say, uh, they don't say, believe me, they don't say it there. They say, you want these with that? Uh, you want to make, you know, want to make it a, a, a value pack or whatever? You say, well, I'm here. What, what, can you go through the accoutrement again? 
And they even, they'd say, sir, there's a long line here. You see, what, do you call that a conduit or is that the delivery vessel? Uh, you want that warm or cold? And then I usually, anytime someone says that, I say it's cold as, you know, warm hands, cold, warm heart, cold hands, they say. And it, it's strange they can hear uh, artists, uh, uh, but you're an artiste, you don't have accoutrement. Uh, well, this this is only entertaining in a sleep podcast, but uh, you say, you say, buddy, give me a break. I say, you're right, you're right, I apologize, I apologize. Uh, but then you co- also, once you go through that part, then you still have lots of others. You say, well, I want some of that stuff. Uh, want some of the, yeah, put put some of that on there. Oh, yeah, dust it up. I want some of that dust. Uh, so you get, it gives, gives you a lot of choices. Uh, in this show, it, it uh, you can kind of listen any way you want. You, you, like, cause sometimes my words feel, to, to a lot of people, listen unrelated to anything I'm saying or any points I'm making. And to someone, you know, that specializes in amuse-bouche and accoutrement, they might say, uh, you can't have that with that. It's just not. I say, well. Anyway, who are whom whom are we to judge? Uh, there, there are artists. So I don't know if I had a point in there other than I'm here to take your mind off of stuff, uh, and I'm here to keep you company. I want you to get get a chance to get a good night's sleep so you can be out there in the world flourishing. I truly believe you deserve a good night's sleep. Uh, I want you to believe that too, even if it's a little bit out of our grasp at times and. You know, just shake a breath with me. I'm here to help. Uh, now, this show doesn't work for everybody, as I kind of said, so give it a few tries. If it doesn't work for you, or you feel your lizard brain, you know, saying, uh, you know, stuff, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash no thank you. It has links to other sleep stuff, a couple other options. So, so check that out. And I think that's it. Uh, like, I, I just want to help you fall asleep. I've been there. That's the main thing out there. In the deep, dark night. Uh, and I want to keep you company. Take your mind off it. Unless, you know, make it less of a, a rigmarole. Uh, most of all, I really appreciate you checking the show out. And I appreciate your time. And just, you know, I do strive and yearn. Uh, and I really want to help you fall asleep. Here's a couple of ways we keep the show uh, going. All right, everybody, it is time to talk about Helix Sleep. I mean, what kind of bed are you sleeping in? Do you want an upgrade? Do you want a bed that's made for the way you sleep? I mean, I love my Helix mattress. Came straight to my door. I took the Helix quiz. I got matched with the Helix at dusk. But I get to see when my friends or family need a bed. I say, hey, take the Helix quiz. HelixSleep.com slash sleep. It takes just two minutes to complete. Matches your body type and sleep preferences to the mattress. It's perfect for you. Like I said, you don't want to buy something made for someone else. With Helix, you get in the mattress you know will be perfect for the way you sleep. Everybody's unique, and Helix knows that. That's why they have several different mattress models to choose from. Soft, medium, firm. Mattress is great for cooling you down if you sleep hot. Spinal alignment to keep away those morning aches and pains. Even uh, Helix Plus mattress for plus-size sleepers. And I sleep hot. I sleep on my side. I sleep on my stomach. And the Helix Dusk Lux fits my needs perfectly. So if you're looking... Looking for a mattress, you take the quiz, you order the mattress you're matched to, and the mattress comes right to your door, shipped for free. You don't ever need to go to a mattress store again. And Helix is awesome. You don't have to take my word for it. It's been recommended by multiple leading chiropractors and doctors of sleep medicine as a go-to solution for improving sleep. So like I said, just go to helixsleep.com slash sleep, take their two-minute sleep quiz, and they'll match you to a customized mattress that'll give you the best sleep of your life. They even have a 10-year warranty. You get to try it out for 100 nights risk-free, and they'll even even pick it up for you if you don't love it, but you will. Helix has financing options and flexible payment plans, so a great night's sleep is never far away. So now is the time. Right now, Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash sleep. That's up to $200 off, but you have to use that link, H-E-L-I-X sleep.com slash sleep. Thanks, everybody.